All done? Dear Tim and Moby, how do hydrogen and oxygen stick together to make water? Atomic glue or something? From Tabitha. <laughs> Actually, she's not that far off. Atoms do tend to stick together, almost as if they were glued. If they didn't, there wouldn't be any visible stuff. Just, Just a, a bunch, bunch of microscopic, microscopic atoms floating around by themselves. themselves. Whoa. But atoms like to stick together, and the reason has to do with what's inside them. Atoms are made up of three basic particles. Positively charged protons, negatively charged electrons, and neutrons, which have no charge. Protons and neutrons clump together in the center of an atom, forming its nucleus. Electrons whiz around the nucleus at different distances, which we call shells. Oh, shells aren't really perfect circles. This is just a simple model. In reality, electrons orbit the nucleus in three-dimensional patterns called clouds. But the circular model helps us see that each shell can hold a certain number of electrons. The first shell, closest to the nucleus, can hold two. The second shell can hold eight electrons, while the third shell can hold up to 18, and so on. And this is where things get sticky. <laughs> sticky. The number of electrons in an atom's outermost shell control how reactive, or likely to bond, it is. When the outer shell is completely full, the atom is inert, meaning it will resist bonding. Get lost. Eight electrons is another stable pattern, even in shells that can hold way more. In all of the noble gases, the outer shell is either full or has eight electrons. That's why they almost never form bonds. The other elements on the table tend to occur in molecules, sets of two or more atoms bonded together. It helps to think of atoms as wanting to be inert, so they try to gain or lose electrons to reach a stable number. Well, take water. It's made of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. As you can see, hydrogen has one electron in its outermost shell. It would love to have one more, since two electrons would fill that shell up. Oxygen has six electrons in its outer shell. Since the second shell can hold eight electrons, oxygen is looking for two more. So, oxygen shares a pair of electrons with one hydrogen, and another pair of electrons with another hydrogen. Now all three atoms are stable. Yay! Yay! This sharing of electron pairs is called a covalent bond. Nope, that's not the only way atoms stick together. Ionic bonds happen when one atom takes an electron from another. Yoinkers! The extra electron gives the first atom a negative charge. And the other atom becomes positively charged since it lost an electron. In other words, they both become ions, atoms with electrical charges. And since opposite charges attract, they bond together. This is called electrostatic attraction. Sodium chloride, which is just table salt, is held together by ionic bonds. That's a good point. On their own, sodium and chlorine atoms have totally different properties than salt. Sodium is a soft metal that burns the skin and explodes on contact with water. And chlorine is a poisonous green gas. But when these two elements react, they form an ionic bond, and we get an edible crystal. Yep, covalent bonds can change an atom's properties too. Hydrogen and oxygen are both invisible gases, and hydrogen is explosive. But when they react, they form water, a very stable liquid. If you break that covalent bond with a little electricity, you get hydrogen and oxygen gas again. No, wait! You know, every week it's the same thing. I teach you something cool, you shoot a laser beam out your finger, and I get in trouble. Well, not this time. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. <laughs>